Hello and welcome to another episode of Life in China. If you're familiar with, your, with my channel, then you'll know that I like to spend every second traveling around the country exploring new places. The best way to travel through China is by the excellent railway network. You can take the high-speed train or the slow train, but which is better? Let's find out. Okay, first things first, and you need to get your ticket. You'll need your passport to get your ticket, and also the booking reference if you booked previously online. If you haven't, you can also buy tickets at the station, but sometimes they don't speak English, and also the tickets might be booked. So I would recommend booking online beforehand, and I'll show you more how to do this at the end. So this is what your train ticket will look like. It'll have your name on it. Also where you're going, so from Xi'an North to Beijing West. <laughs> this is the train number G666 and this is the gate that you'll need to go to. Also has the date and the time and then what carriage and what seat number you'll be at. I can't really read Chinese but if you can see all these bits that aren't in Chinese, they're in numbers so it's really easy to find out where you're going. You can look on the board as well and it'll say your train number and then the gate that you're at, B12. After you've got your tickets, you'll head through security. It's a bit like traveling by plane because you put it through the scanner so they can check your bags. So I'd leave them a little bit of extra time to make sure you've got time to get to your gate after getting through security. If you do find yourself with time to kill, then there are a few restaurants that you can get some food, also some convenience stores so you can grab some snacks, and also you might want to grab some toilet paper just in case. About 15 to 20 minutes before the train is due to take off, then you can check in. There's usually a big queue waiting. I like to hang back a little bit and let the queue go down and then go after that. As you can see, everybody's trying to pile onto our train right now. It's easy to spot the difference between the high-speed and slow trains. The high-speed trains are usually white and sleek and look really aerodynamic. The slow trains are usually green with yellow window trims. And while they don't have the same modern design, I think they are pretty charming. At the end of the day, if you're traveling a sizable distance in China, it's what's inside that counts. I'm on the high-speed train right now, and the seats are arranged in a group of three, and then two with an aisle down the middle. I'm just in the standard uh, second-class train, and actually it's really nice. They've got these big windows so you can see out in the countryside. They've got loads of legroom, more so than any train that I've been on in England. Even more than any flight that I've been on, which is great, especially if you've got long legs like me. You've got loads of places to put your luggage, you've got a bit above and also if you've got big luggage there's bits at the front and at the back of, oh, front and back of the train. What else do we have? We've got a table that you can put your food on or your laptop. There's a plug that you can charge your mobile device or your laptop. And also the seats, oh, this side, the seats recline so I can just relax for the next five hours. On the other hand, sleeper trains have a somewhat different feel. I'm sleeping in a soft sleeper train tonight, which means I'm sharing a room with three other people. It's got two bunks on each side. There's also a hard sleeper option, but this means it has three bunks on each side. We've got a bottom, a middle, and a top. As it's an overnight train, I would suggest if you can afford the soft sleeper, then go for it because it's a little bit more comfort. I've got a little shelf here, which is handy for a phone or book or whatever. I've got a little hanger to hang your coat up in. I've got some buttons. Don't know what they do. Uh, we've got a little light, which is handy if you want to read so you don't disturb your neighbours. Um, I think there's a plug somewhere so you can charge your phone. There's a TV. I don't know if that works either. Maybe the buttons are for the TV. Also got some free slippers which is really handy so you can pop pop them on 
Despite reaching speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, what's surprising is just how smooth the high-speed train is. No matter which train you'll be getting, I'm sure at some point with zipping across China, you're going to need the loop. So I'm on the sleeper train. Like I said, I'm in the slow sleeper compartment. So let's have a look at the toilets here. Ooh, it's a Western style toilet. Now I've been on a hard sleeper before and it is a Chinese style toilet. So bear that in mind if you're gonna book tickets, hard sleeper, Chinese, soft sleeper, Western. What's interesting about the high-speed train is that they've got two types of toilets in one bit. So here we've got our Chinese-style squat toilet and there's also a Western toilet right next door. Both of them have toilet paper which is amazing and very unusual for China and they're also a lot nicer than the ones that I found on the sleeper train. There's also a sink opposite so you can wash your hands straight away. If you're anything like me, then you hate going to bed on an empty stomach. I would recommend getting some food from a restaurant before you get on the overnight train. There is a snack car, but it's pretty limited. But if you don't have time to do that, they do sell instant noodles. So do like the locals do and use the boiling water that's in every coach to make yourself a nice tasty treat. There's also a snack cart available on the high speed train. This could be a little bit overpriced, but I'd recommend bringing your own food with you. Or, like I said, there's some restaurants that you can eat before you get on the train. In every cart, there's hot water available, so you can also get some instant noodles or a tea or coffee. There are lots of differences between the high speed train and the sleeper train, but one thing that they do have in common is that you get to see these amazing views of the Chinese countryside. <laughs> it was like a green wall! If you're traveling to China, then there's a few different agencies that you can use to help book your train tickets. But actually, it's really easy to book them yourself using a website called trip.com. This used to be called Ctrip, which is why I called it that before, but now it's trip.com. When you go into the website, you can pick the language that you want to use, the currency you want to use, and also you can book different things on this website. So you can also book hotels and flights as well as trains, which means you can get your entire trip on this website, which is great. Obviously, we're talking about trains today, so let's have a look at booking some trains. I took the sleeper train from Beijing to Xi'an, and then on the way back, I took the high-speed train. So let's look at this route, Beijing to Xi'an. I'll bring up different options for that date. Now, if it's less than a month, sorry, I've got a really itchy head. It'll bring up different options for that date. Now, if it's less than a month, you'll be able to book it straight away. But if it's over this, then usually you can reserve and then you'll get your tickets at a later date, depending on when they get released. Obviously, this is a little bit risky, especially around public holidays, as you can't guarantee that you're going to get your tickets. But you wouldn't be able to guarantee it at the train station either. Let's have a look. So here we have the high speed trains because it takes between four to six hours which means it's a fast train. At the side, we've got the different classes, second class, first class, and business class, and the prices. We've got the overnight trains, or the slow trains. As you can see, this one takes 15 hours, 11 hours. So they're anything between 11 and 15 hours. Here are the options. Hard seat, hard sleeper, deluxe sleeper, and soft sleeper, and the prices. This one doesn't have the hard seat option, this one's got a standing option, so they're all a little bit different. So let's pick this one, second class to book. So once you go to booking, to book it, it'll bring up a different page. Add in your details, your passport number, your name and your date of birth. You can also add another adult. 
The great thing about C-Chip is once you've put your passport details in once, it saves them. So it's super fast and super easy to just click a button and it fills in the information. You can also select the seats that you want, which is a new function, so that's great. To get your tickets, you need to put the name of, your con of the contact person and an email address. Then it will send you an email confirmation with a code. To pick up your tickets, you need to take your passports and the code. You just give them to the person at the desk, you don't even need to say anything, and they'll just give you the tickets back, which is really handy and really easy, especially if you don't speak Chinese. Once you have to pay, there's different options. I use WeChat because I live in China, but you can also input a card. Now, you can also do this on the C-Trip app on your phone. The app looks very similar. You've got the different options of what you want to book at the top, special offers, your account, the trips that you're taking. So once you booked a trip, it will come up here and it also will have a button that you can press which will show the confirmation code that you'll also be sending your emails. So this is a little bit handier, if, especially if you're on, your go, on the go and you've got loads of different trains to catch. So which is better? Well, that depends on how much time you have to travel and also how far you're going. If you're only going a short distance, then I definitely recommend getting the high-speed train. It'll get you there much faster and it's really comfortable. If you're going a little bit further, then why not get the overnight train? This will also save you money on a hotel for the evening. All in all, both options are way better than any flight or train that I've taken back home. That's it for another episode of Life in China. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then give it a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.